Michael Landsberg joins us from TSN 1050, uh, the TSN icon, frankly, Canadian sports broadcasting icon. Good morning, Michael. How are you, sir? You know, I'm good, Rod. Last week I was uh, talking about the Philadelphia Eagles, and I kept calling their coach Rod Peterson. And then I went on the <laughs> intercom to a producer, and I said, well, why am I saying Rod Peterson? And he goes to me, how the hell do I know why you're saying Rod Peterson? So yeah, who the I'm here to that? say, this is your fault, man. That's hilarious. Well, thank you for the pub, by the way. Checks in the mail. Michael, it was unintentional. Yeah, right. Listen, Mike Babcock, the guys were saying, you guys have been close, worked together on mental health efforts. Um, where are you on the firing of Mike Babcock and the fallout since? Well, I was listening to your show for the last 15 minutes. And one thing that I, I think you have a little bit wrong, if I may, uh, and even if you say I may not, I'm going to go ahead and say it. You know, you've been <laughs> referencing his style of coaching and saying, you know, if he can learn to change, then maybe he'll get another job. He was not fired from the Maple Leafs because of how he treated players. He was fired for only one reason, and that was because the Leafs were struggling. And over the last year, they had been struggling. Now, you could directly correlate, perhaps, his treatment of players and his style of coaching to their lack of production. But this is not new. Like Mike Babcock's been the same guy for four and a half years. Why did he get fired almost exactly a week ago? And the answer is because the Leafs were on a point uh, pace for 85 this season. So I, I don't think this is a statement from the organization saying uh, we don't like this style anymore. This was a statement saying we don't like losing. <laughs> So how do you feel about the allegations that have come out since this? You've clarified why he was like, I obviously you saw that I said, I think it's highly unfair with, with the public opinion here. Where do you stand on it? I, well, I stand out, uh, you know, there, there's no one simple way to put that. And, and one of the things that I, I think we need to do as, as just folks is separate what you hear about a guy and from what you see from that guy. How does he treat you as opposed to how does he treat others, right? And you can't be excited to that. You can't say, well, you know, that guy's a mass murderer, but he's really nice to me. But you can make the statement, as I will with Mike Babcock, that I have, uh, I've never spoken about hockey with him. Our relationship has been totally either personal or in dealing with mental health. Uh, every single thing that I've ever asked a favor from him to do, he's asked me for guidance in how he should go about dealing with mental health and what he can bring. Uh, he's, been, uh, he's been amazing. And that's not to say that anybody else's opinion is wrong. I'm judging him on how he treats me. As far as the Maple Leafs are concerned, uh, what he was doing was not working. It seemed really clear to, to many of us, maybe all of us, that something was wrong with the Maple Leafs. And there was the sense that they were underperforming. And management certainly saw it that way. And if you have management that says, you know, we have the talent to win, but we're not winning, that's when the coach gets fired in almost every situation. You know, do did I think that he communicated as well to his players as he did to me, for instance, uh, the answer would be absolutely not. You know, I think that he falls into the category of old school and old school, you know, in these days is not, hey, that's a guy from the past. It's saying he coaches the way guys coach 25, 30, 40 years. That is to say, I'm the boss, this is my room, that's my ice surface, and you do what I tell you to do, and I will do anything to get more out of you, even if it includes playing mind games. Well, you know what, that, uh, that way used to work. I, uh, when I played, I, there was, uh, that's how I responded. That's how we all responded to, you know, the coach was the boss. You do what he says, even if it's wrong, everybody's doing the same thing. So you're going to be successful, you know, uh, even if you think it's the wrong thing. Uh, but, uh, you know, now that Babs is kind of, this is all done, you know, I'm frankly sick of hearing about it and talking about it. What do you think about the new guy coming in? Sheldon, how, how do you think, what's, what's your initial uh, thoughts of him? Have you had any interactions with him? What are you kind of hearing with the groundswell uh, around Mr. O'Keefe? Well, one of the easiest jobs to, to do is to replace a guy who apparently was not well liked in the locker room. You know, if, if, if a team was struggling, but the players said, oh my gosh, we love our coach. We're not playing well but we love our coach. That's a tough coach to replace, right? But when when you realize that these players are, are feeling a huge measure of freedom that they weren't feeling before, that as they have said almost to a man, you know, there's a joy and there is an enjoyment to our, our, our practices and to the environment we're playing in that's a really easy thing to step into and Sheldon Keefe is a super smart guy and I mean this may be 100% his style but he realized 
don't go into this locker room and and coach these players, treat these players the same way as the last guy because they didn't like him. I'm sure he's being overly nice, overly gentle, overly soft at this point. And I bet you that will change because I've heard about his reputation as a coach, which is, which is there's no blemishes on it at all. But he does have a tougher side to him, I think, than he's shown. So, I, I, I mean, I, I like the move. I, I'm a big believer that in 2019, you, you got to go with – you got to go with youth. You know, you got a general manager who's 32. You got a coach who's like 37, uh, 37, something like that. So that's like 69, 70 years between them. Lou Lamorello, the guy that was general manager, is 77. So you got a young organization that I think now is in sync. The coach and the general manager think the same way. And everybody knew, even though they denied it all the time, everybody knew that Mike Babcock and Kyle Dubas did not see hockey the same way. Last thing, Michael, because I know you got a role. You are a lifelong Argos fan. I want to know your thoughts on Pinball's return. You don't have a quarterback. You got a coach in limbo. We hear that he's going to be back. Where are you on your boatman, the double blue, as we sit here today? Well, everybody loves pinball. The question is, you know, he's he's such an engaged guy who does a million different things. Like I, I find it hard to believe that he's going to be in his office at ten o'clock at night looking at scouting reports. It seems to me like, uh, and he he may prove me wrong, and this is not an insult. I just think there's too many facets of Mike Pinball Clements to say he's going to be dedicated to the position of general manager like other GMs in the Canadian Football League. So that that could be an issue uh, if he hires a great staff. Uh, and I think he's got a good assistant general manager, then maybe it will work. Uh, I certainly don't love the idea of bringing Corey Chamberlain back. Um, this past year was a disaster, guys. Let, let me tell you, you know, living in Toronto, the Argos just, they, they've disappeared, and they had this hopeful boost from BMO Field that it would make a difference. People don't care in Toronto. Like, like the Argos for right now, do not exist in the city of Toronto. It's like they're a dead body over there that is still warm. So in theory, you could put you, you you know you could you could put the paddles on it and you could juice the body and bring it back to life. But it's still a dead body for now. And right now the Argos are a dead body. I mean I, I hope that changes, but I haven't seen any reason yet to think it will. Well, for any CFL fan, it hurts. It hurts you to say it. I know that because you're a huge fan. So it's uh, not our issue to deal with. It's it's the CFLs and the Argos, and I and I wish them the best. Michael, thanks so much for the insight, as always. Yeah, yeah. By the way, you said uh, you know uh, we'll uh, we'll let you go. I know you're really busy. Not true. I got nothing to do, man. That's you saying, "Hey, I'm booting you off the show." I got <laughs> nothing but time. Uh, hold on. It, it is. It's Rod, right? You're not Doug Peterson, the coach. Not of the Doug. Not today. Eagles. Not today. They okay. told me that you had a conference call. You had a role for. I'm just going by what I'm told, Michael. And I also know you, Jess. So thank you. Thank. Thanks, guys, uh, for having me. And uh, yeah, I mean, just final word on Babcock. Uh, I judge him uh, in in like you're not talking to the broadcaster now. You're talking to a guy who, um, you know, who who has people in his life, right? People who are friends. And I judge Mike Babcock. In this conversation, only is one thing, and what's he been like to me? And um, he's been he's been great. I, I I can say I love the guy. That doesn't mean I think that that the Leafs were wrong to fire him, but I can safely say Mike Babcock is to me a really good guy. Really good stuff. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate it. You're watching Rod Peterson on demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.